any roadway designer will tell you that a typical cross section is actually a misnomer. There's no typical as you're designing roadways. All along the roadway from the beginning to the end, different design requirements and different conditions may exist. In the past, these different design requirements would have required multiple subassemblies and assemblies to accomplish one overall design. Regions would have to be created, everything would have to be carefully split up and analyzed, and it was a lot more work. Civil 3D affords us the ability to utilize two different conditional subassemblies. One subassembly tests for vertical uh, issues and the other tests for horizontal. In this example, we're going to be working with the vertical, and this is the conditional cut or fill subassembly. What this does is this takes a point, and at that point, it tests against the surface, and it determines whether it's in cut or fill. It also determines by how much it's in cut or fill, and then you can attach a subassembly based on that information that's returned. In our example, I would like to test on the outside link of our sidewall whether or not we're in cut or fill and how much. If we're in a cut situation, it doesn't matter how deep in cut we are, I would like to daylight to the right of way utilizing a two to one slope if at all possible. If I'm in a fill situation, however, I have two conditions I want to check for. I want to check for a shallow fill and a deep fill. So what I'm looking for is if I'm in a fill that's less than four feet at this test point, I want to do the same thing as I did above. I just want to fill at a slope of four to four within the right of way limits. If my daylight at a four to one applies outside the right of way limits, then this subassembly will allow me to adjust the slope to get back within my right of way. If the condition returns a fill that's greater than four feet, however, I want it to put in a retaining wall. To do this, we're going to utilize the conditional cut or fill assembly, subassembly, and then attach these conditions to the end of it. In the interest of efficiency and speed, I'm not going to walk through all the steps required to start out and build the assembly. Suffice it to say, we're going to utilize our Lane Super Elevation AOR subassembly. Uh, with that, we're going to use an urban curb and gutter subassembly. Uh, attached to that, a link width and slope subassembly, then an urban sidewalk and then another link width and slope. And the reason I'm using the link width and slope is because I can assign the super elevation shoulder slope as well as assigning a zero slope uh, to our sidewalk for ADA regulations. Now we're at the point where we're ready to put in our conditional tests. On the conditional tab of the tool palettes, I'm going to select conditional cut or fill. On this particular subassembly, the side matters, but the layout width and grade really are unimportant to the actual function of the subassembly. All this does is allow you to change the visual appearance of it as you're creating it and get things out of the way if need be. What we're checking for is whether we're in cut or fill and our minimum and maximum distance. For cut, our minimum distance is going to be a cut of zero, and our fill is going to be a maximum distance of 9,999. This is the maximum that Civil 3D utilizes uh, when it says to reach out and look for something. Once I have the conditional cutter fill set up, I'm going to insert my daylight inside right of way subassembly. And this subassembly allows me to specify a slope, typical slope, and a right of way. Your right of way is set as a baseline offset. So 
we're going to use a 50 foot offset. Our typical cut slope, as you can see, is 2 to 1. I'm going to set our maximum as 1 to 1. But in this situation, um, if we reach the right-of-way line without daylighting, then we can actually modify that maximum slope if need be. That was the option that we just set. Next, I'm going to go in and select the conditional cutter fill again, and I'm going to attach it to the same point. This is unlike other subassemblies. This is going to be attached to the same point as another one. Uh, we're going to set up the visual layout width and grade. Again, this doesn't matter for the function of it. It's just testing at a point. The difference is I'm going to set this to fill. My minimum distance is going to be zero. My maximum distance, I'm going to change that to four. So what we're going to look for what this is checking for is, all right, if I'm in fill, how deep am I? So if I'm in up to four feet of fill, then I'm going to insert a daylight inside of right-of-way subassembly again with the parameters fill at a four-to-one slope. Again, we're going to go back and add another conditional cutter fill. Only this time, we're going to set our minimum distance to 4.01 and our maximum distance to 99.99. Again, that's going to reach out as far as it can. Now, at this deeper fill, instead of filling more than 4 feet at that point, we're going to go ahead and just tie into the existing ground with a retaining wall. I'm going to insert the retaining wall. I think this is the one I want to use. We can see what it looks like in a fill condition, where it attaches, and then where the existing ground will attach to it. And this will actually stretch uh, vertically in order to meet both the attachment point and calculate the depth based on the existing ground and the footing cover. So. Again, the help file is actually helpful with these subassemblies when wanting to know exactly what they do. We'll set our parameters and we'll add it in. All right, so we have the right side of our assembly defined as far as daylighting. So at this point, I'm just going to start mirroring everything so I don't have to recreate everything on the other side. So I'll select the top one and I'll mirror it. And you'll notice a problem. Our daylight inside right of way is pointing in the wrong direction. And that's because we're on the left side of the baseline now. So let's change that right of way offset to a negative 50. We're good to go. And then I will speed up again in the sake of time and go through mirroring everything else. Now we're ready to use our subassembly and assembly.